What an incredible weekend of wrestling we just witnessed. Thank you so much to all you talented wrestlers. You really treated us fans. And now there's only one tournament remaining, the NCAA Wrestling Tournament, coming up in a couple of weeks. But let's recap what happened in the Big Ten Championships this past weekend. Let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Josiah and welcome to the Fanco Wrestling Show. This week we're talking all about the Big Ten Championships and I want to let you know that this channel is all about wrestling news, tips, and lifestyle. And to all of you new subscribers, I want to send a sincere thank you. You've helped grow this channel from a couple hundred subscribers all the way to a thousand and twenty five hundred and I haven't got the chance to thank all of you yet but it's been a real fun ride and a big pleasure so I appreciate all the support you're giving me and I wanted to let you also know that as a treat I created a couple uh, Fanco Wrestling shirts that are now available on the Fanco Wrestling store I'll link to that in the description below so you can get your official Fanco Wrestling as well as Wrestling Lifestyle uh, branded shirts so check that out right down below in the description and let's not waste a second more because I want to talk all about the Big Ten Championships. It was such an incredible weekend. I'm so, I'm so stoked about what just happened and what I witnessed. So let's talk right now about what my predictions were versus what actually happened. And we're just going to run down this list of the official Big Ten Champions of 2019. So here's the list right here. And as you see, I actually was, I got seven out of 10 of these guys right. And as you may know, Big Tens are a crazy tournament and really anything can happen. And that's exactly what happened this weekend. The upsets were, uh, there were a lot of upsets this weekend, as you'd expect. Um, but there were also a couple just great matches that could have gone either way. And running down this list, so at 125 pounds, you had the biggest rematch uh probably this entire tournament, with Sebastian Vera versus Spencer Lee. Now, Spencer Lee, he looked really good in that match, and I'll go through each of these weight classes right after I run down the uh, every winner. But Spencer Lee looked good, but Rivera ultimately came out on top. He won at 125 pounds. At 133, Nick Siriano came out on top. We'll talk a little bit about what happened with Michich. And then at 141 pounds, McKenna. I got that one right. I predicted that he was going to be another Big Ten champion uh, for the second time. At 149 pounds, uh, we had Ashnaught winning, 157 Nolf. 165, I don't know if it was a surprise to you or not, but Marino Alex Marinelli of Iowa beat Vincenzo Joseph in a phenomenal match, one of the best of the night, really. At 174 pounds, we have Mark Hall. 84, Miles Martin won uh, by a medical forfeit win over Shakur Rashid of Penn State. At 197, we had Bo Nickel, of course, blowing away the competition. And at heavyweight, a huge upset. And Anthony Gassar winning his first Big Ten title, beating undefeated Gable Stevenson. What a weight. And then, of course, we had the team race, which Penn State ran away with this year. And they, they ended up beating Ohio State, Michigan, all these other teams. We'll run through that in a little bit. But I actually, I did predict that, as I'm sure many of you guys did. Now, right now, I want you to tell me, what was your favorite match of the Big Ten Championships? Maybe it was a finals match, or maybe it was even a semifinals match. Tell me what your favorite match was down below. I'm excited to discuss it with you. And let's run through each of these weights. So... Starting at 125 pounds, Sebastian Rivera versus Spencer Lee, the rematch of the year, and it held up. This match was great. And what I liked, I mean, what I like so much about this, you know, you have two aggressive guys. You've Spencer Lee, who, of course, in the past has dominated uh, Rivera, but what happened is Rivera over the past year has trained in the offseason. He's built up his skill set and his technical skills. And he's on the same level as Spencer Lee now. And as we know from this past weekend, he's a little bit above because he beat him. Um, and this match, uh, you know, Spencer Lee got a nice takedown early on. And then kind of what happened, Rivera got an escape. He got another escape um, in the second and third period. But then he ended up getting a late takedown in the third period, which ended up tying up the score because Spencer Lee actually had a a uh, minute of over a minute of riding time and he ended up tying the score now it was kind of funny because Rivera thought he had won he was already flexing to the crowd and uh, all pumped up but he obviously he didn't win yet and until sudden victory because this match went to sudden victory overtime and really and I'm sorry he didn't get two escapes 
one of the points that he got was because of a hands to the face, and which was, I knew that I knew I knew I knew this match, this stupid rule was going to screw somebody over, and and listen, all all the respect, all all credit due to Rivera. Uh, he's really improved this year, and all credit to him. I'm just talking about the rule itself here, okay? The hands to the face call was total BS. It, it's not wrestling, you know, like tapping somebody's face. It's meant to prevent guys from getting hurt. But in this case, are you kidding me? This is what we're going to decide this match on. This is what this is this is what wrestling has come down to now, is this stupid hands to the face BS. So anyway, that helped send it into overtime, and the coaches of Iowa actually thought that there was a hands of the face call from Northwestern from uh, Rivera in in overtime. That rule did not get over, or that ruling did not get overturned, but the challenge brick was thrown. So with this, uh, Rivera actually remains undefeated at the weight class. Of course, he has one loss to Stefan Micic when he bumped up a weight uh, to wrestle him, but undefeated in the weight class. And Lee is listen. This entire tournament, he he looked he looked really good. He looked like his normal self. People were worried about if Spencer Lee is okay, and and as I said in one of my previous videos, I, he is okay. He's doing really well. Um, of course, you know he he lost a pitch. He lost to Rivera before, and this is his third loss of the season to Rivera again. Uh, but he looked well through the rest of the tournament. Uh, he beat Russell in the semis. Of course, Russell from Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, I heard you guys in the last video. But, of course, uh, he majored Russell in the semifinals 8-0. to zero. So he just crushed him. But, anyway, that's enough about 125. Let's move on to 133 pounds. Now, this was interesting because, of course, I uh, had predicted Stefan Micic to win this weight. Micic of Michigan. Uh, but he ended up forfeiting in the semifinals to Luke Pletcher of Ohio State and you know I I don't know the full circumstances with these and there were a couple medical forfeits throughout this tournament we'll talk about uh, 184 later on but you know this was it was unfortunate really because I wanted to see him win a another Big Ten title I wanted to see him compete uh, against Suriano against Pletcher uh, again and you know, we didn't get to see that, and hopefully we will get to see that at Nationals, but it was a medical forfeit to Pletcher. Now, so the the, fi the finals were Pletcher against uh, Suriano, Suriano, of course, of Rutgers, and what was big here, you know, uh, this, this was a, it was a good match to see Suriano succeed, and He's had a, a rough couple of years with all everything going on. Last year, he was injured. Year before that, he couldn't compete because of, um, I believe it was an injury, and there was crazy stuff happening with um, Penn State and all that. So, you know, Suriano finally is on top of the podium. Uh, he wins his first Big Ten title. Congrats to him. And he's the first of two Rutgers to win this year, the first time that's ever happened in uh, Rutgers history. And listen, New Jersey showed up. A lot of these guys are from New Jersey. I believe I read a fact where six out of the 10 champs, New Jersey guys. Uh, so over overtaking, overpowering the PA guys. So, you know, uh, kudos to New Jersey. But uh, Suriano looked good. He was the aggressor most of the match. He ended up winning that match 4-1. Uh, to one. And, um, you know, other other things to note in this weight, because, of course, 133 has been the talk of the season. So other things to note in this weight. Pletcher, you know, he, he had a pretty good ride to the finals. Um, and good as in, like, he had a, he wrestled a good tournament. He beat Roman Bravo Young, which he got revenge on, in uh from the Ohio State match and then on the other side Suriano he beat uh Lezak and then he and then he beat uh, Austin DeSanto which honestly that was one of my favorite matches uh, out of the entire tournament was that DeSanto Suriano match because tension levels were a high Suriano's out there yelling at co co coaches he's yelling at brands and everybody uh because at the end of the match he was still on DeSanto for another five seconds and here's the thing I could see uh, DeSanto doing the same thing to him. So, you know, really, I don't think there's anything to get upset about here. These guys are just out here. They're out here to win. They're out here. They're aggressors, and they want to win, and, and that's really what it comes down to. Um, other than that, you know, Lezak end, ended up beating DeSanto in the Constellation Finals. And then one other funny thing to note is if you guys were watching um, – on flow, the third or the uh, the third and fifth place matches, uh, Roman Bravo Young went out uh, to get his hand raised because 
against Michich because he had forfeited. And Roman Bravo Young, uh, he got his hand raised. He was walking away, and, and one of the other coaches threw the challenge brick out there. There's a funny little thing that happened um, that I want I want to point out. Uh, so other than that, let's move on to 141 pounds, which was Joey McKenna of Ohio State. He ended up decisioning uh, Chad Red. He beat him by a score of 9-2. Chad Red of Nebraska wrestled a phenomenal tournament. Uh, Red knocked off a couple guys. He knocked off the number one seed at the weight uh, at Big Ten's Mikey Carr of Illinois. And then he ended up beating uh, Store of Michigan. So he he actually he wrestled a really great tournament. And, you know, he, he did end up losing to McKenna in the finals. But I think McKenna just wanted it a bit more. You know, it is his final tournament. And this is his second Big Ten title. And actually, it's his fourth conference title overall. Uh, if you guys don't know, McKenna wrestled for Stanford previously. He won two Pac-12 titles, and now he's in the Big Ten with Ohio State. But you know, I, I thought that uh, you know McKenna was going to win this just because he wanted it bad as a senior. He did end up beating Nick Lee, avenging his loss from the Ohio State match. Um, there were a couple of those this this weekend where you know guys avenged previous losses, but really well battled. Um, match for McKenna. Other than that, uh, Nick Lee, other notes here, Nick Lee ended up battling back for third place um, after he lost, which which was really nice. Uh, but, you know, I, I wish I could have seen him in the finals as a Penn State guy, um, just because, you know, these seedings were kind of odd. And, you know, a couple of you guys have commented on it. And I mean, a lot of you guys have been talking about how Mikey Carr got the number one seed over McKenna and Lee. It was a little bit strange, but uh, I, I wonder how Lee would have done against Chad Red in this tournament because he did beat him earlier in the year. So we could have seen him in the finals. Now, of course, that really, you know, wouldn't have mattered because he took second or he would have ended up taking second considering he lost to McKenna this tournament but you know it's just a couple of things to think about and then you know there was also a very strong performance by uh, Max Murin of Iowa and you know as a true fe- or I believe he's a true freshman yeah he he wrestled a really strong tournament uh he ended up beating uh Mikey Carr again Mikey Carr the first seed ended up taking eighth place so you know the the final um Placings here were McKenna first, Chatterred second, Lee third, uh, Mitch McKee from Minnesota's fourth, and then so on and so forth. But, you know, really solid weight class. And at 149 pounds, Anthony Ashnall versus Micah Jordan. That was, a, that was a match, and I wasn't expecting it to be that much of a match. I should have. I mean, it's the Big Ten Championship, so what do, you, what do I expect? But, you know, I predicted that Ashnall was going to win, but he had beat... Jordan earlier in the season. Uh, I believe it was Cliff Keene that he beat him. And Ashnall of Rutgers ended up winning 8-6. to six. So this was a pretty tight match. High scoring match, really, but a pretty tight match. So what happened is Ashnall got a takedown um, in the second period, and then Jordan actually ended up getting a takedown in the third. He And then he kept cutting him and uh, ended up getting the score back up 8-6. to six. Ultimately, he could not... Uh, take him down uh, in the end. Couldn't get that final score. Couldn't get t- uh, send it into sudden victory. But uh, Ashnault came out on top with, with a cradle in the end uh, on Michael Jordan's shot and came out on top with the victory. So Ashnault last year, he was out with a victory. Um, you know, I, I made the mistake on my last video, on my preview video, saying that he had lost to Zane last year. He did not. That is false. That's fake news. Uh, he was out last year with an injury. This is actually his sixth year of eligibility uh, because of that injury, and he is a three-time Big Ten champion now, so that's uh, that's pretty exciting, and this could be another great match at the national tournament. So this is the first time that there are two uh, Big Ten champions from Rutgers, and I'm pumped to see this rematch if it happens at the national tournament come March, this could be a great match. And Michael Jordan has been getting closer and closer and closer to overturning that victory uh, with a couple of comeback matches. So what will happen at nationals? Let me know who wins that match at nationals. Will Ashnall remain undefeated or will he fall to Jordan? Moving on. Uh, 
actually to some other notes from that weight you know pat lugo had a very strong performance uh after he lost to bergy uh bergy wrestled a very uh strong tournament as well he ended up taking uh Sixth place from Penn State, uh, and at this weight at 149 pounds, we have six qualifiers for the national tournament, and uh, we could get some uh, wild cards here that go to the tournament, but we have six qualifiers, which is the lowest out of any weight class, uh, actually besides 197 at Big Ten. So uh, a lot of these other weight classes qualify nine guys. This is six. So one other weight class that qualifies nine is 157 pounds. And was anybody really surprised that Jason Nolf got the bonus decision, bonus victory uh, at 157 pounds over Tyler Berger of Nebraska? He won this match by a score of 12 to 4. And really, Nolf just dominated this entire weight class. He dominated in the finals, which... You know, good for him. He won his second Big Ten title, and you know, a lot uh, the a couple of people thought it was his third, but it, it's actually only his second because last year he was also injured. Um, he did wrestle at big, at, at nationals, but not in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, so he got that qualification for nationals. But he, this is his second title, and he wrestled a uh, great, great match. He got he just kept getting takedown after takedown after takedown the entire tournament and uh, you know uh, a well-deserved championship for Jason Nolf and then you know this was really where Penn State started to get big uh as far as from here on out uh, there was a Penn State guy in every single finals match so Penn State just crushed it they had six finalists which is the most in school history and we'll get to the team scores in just a bit but you know great job so other notes in this weight this was a um this is a pretty all-around uh a lot of different upsets in this way. You know, one match to note is uh, Deacon. Uh, so Deacon actually of Northwestern lost to Blees and ended up battling back through the consolations to take fifth place. Uh, so he, you know, he ended up scoring, uh, beating a lot of these guys, wrestling really well. First place, Nolf. Berger in second. Alec Pentelio, who lost to Nolf in the semis, ended up getting third. Keelum Young from Iowa, fourth. And Ryan Deacon, fifth. Steve Bleese, uh, sixth. So that's that at 157 pounds. At 165, wow, 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 at 165 pounds. Alex Marinelli showed up big time for Iowa and beat Vincenzo Joseph uh, by a score of nine to three so six point deficit that uh you know chenzo lost and what a match this was these are two guys that you know chenzo is really great with those over under hooks and he wasn't quite able to get that against marinelli and you know marinelli i guarantee he's been training like this in the room to not get thrown and there were a couple times it was it was very close uh where he almost getting got thrown but he actually ended up kind of reversing what chenzo had ended up ducking around and getting two and th this happened quite a few times so it was actually a scoreless first period and then the second and third is really where things uh got crazy so what happened here is uh marinelli took a shot chenzo was looking for those underhooks and then marinelli ended up reversing him around getting getting six he took him to his back got the six points and uh that's really where he got up big, and that's where Chenzo, he was down down big, and he had to do something crazy to end up pulling out this victory. Unfortunately, he could not. Uh, unfortunately for Penn State fans, fortunately for Iowa fans, and this this was a, a match people were really looking forward to because both of these guys are undefeated this season. They have a couple wins and losses against each other, and um, you know, Chenzo lost to him last dual meet um, whenever the Iowa and Penn State wrestled last year, but then what ended up happening is is he beat him again in the in Big Ten championships when it mattered. Now where it really is going to matter is next week or two weeks at nationals if they wrestle again, which is very possible uh, considering the field of contenders in this weight class. But this this is really one of the toughest weight classes, and neither of these guys wrestled chumps to get here. You know, in the semis, Chenzo. Uh, pinned logan massa he pinned logan massa of uh michigan and that was huge that was huge for vincenzo sending him into the finals and and, and really making a statement on the other side uh, we had that rematch between marinelli and wick and marinelli for the third time this season i believe came out 
on top with the victory. And other notes in this weight, you know, Massa actually ended up beating Wick. He beat him in the uh, Constellation Finals, which was, you know, great job on, on uh, Massa. And then yeah, after, after they both lost in the semis, really other than that, nothing too crazy. Um, he... Massa also had a win over uh, the four seed, Isaiah White. He had a win over Peyshawn Campbell of Ohio State and then uh, Evan Wick. So great tournament for Massa overall. And uh, this was this is a field of stacked contenders. At 174 pounds, where we have eight qualifiers for the national tournament, eight available allocations for them, uh, we had Mark Hall taking the victory here over Miles Amin of Michigan. Uh, he beat him by a score of three to two, I believe it was. And, you know, this this is a little bit tighter than Mark Hall would have wanted it to be. You saw him after the match, uh, a little bit upset. He was actually one of the only guys that didn't, um, or I'm, I, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but he he was upset after the match. And, you know, really the probably the biggest thing to note here is, his celebration after the match was what what happened. So he had this thing going on on Twitter with Flow Wrestling where he, uh, Mark Hall he plays the recorder and you know he he does all this fun stuff after the match with his celebrations. So Flow Wrestling said, "Hey, if you win the title, why don't you somehow bring your recorder into this? And if you do that, we will donate four hundred dollars to Thon. Now Thon is a big." Uh, charity fundraiser at Penn State University. It's a dance marathon, um, 46-hour dance marathon where they raise money for kids uh, kids with cancer, unfortunately. And so Mark, uh, Mark Hall said, all right, I'll do it. If you donate $400, I'll donate $100. <laughs> In the interview, he ended up bringing his recorder out even after he was upset at that, which, you know, you got to give him total respect. And what happened, unfortunately, you know, the crowd started to boo. And it actually, they weren't booing him necessarily. They were booing the fact that in the arena, they cut out that interview, they cut out the mic, and he didn't get to players a quarter. I, I wasn't there in the arena. That's just, you know, from what I've heard. Uh, so, you know, Mark Hall's a fun guy, and I really don't think there are many guys who hate him. But, you know, good on him for doing that. And in the rest of the weight class, so Skaska took out Labriola. In the quarters and he is a guy from minnesota and this is really because minnesota had a great great tournament and and uh Skatska wrestled tough he wrestled he beat labriel in the quarters beat him again in the constellation finals and he's a guy who kind of came out of nowhere uh in this tournament in, in this season to to beat labriola one of the top seeds of the tournament wrestled really well now um also in the Constellation Semis, Labriola did beat Lydie, who was another top-ranked guy, top-seeded guy in the weight class at 174. So that's it there um, for that. Uh, Labriola ended up taking fourth, and Lydie ended up taking fifth place. At 184 pounds, at 184 pounds, let's talk about that. So Miles Martin versus Shakur Rashid didn't happen and I know a lot of people were upset by this, including myself. As a Penn State fan, you know, Penn State and Ohio State, that's one of the biggest rivalries in college wrestling. Recent rivalries, but one of the biggest rivalries. We didn't get that match because Shakur medically forfeited. We didn't get that match because of the forfeit. So Miles Martin ended up becoming the his it was his first Big Ten championship. Congrats to Miles Martin on that. And I know after the match, you know, stand up guy, uh, he's talking about how he didn't want to win it that way. He was kind of confused by it. So why did this happen? What could have happened that Shakur didn't wrestle? Um, you know, the first thing is he's hurt. Uh, he's been hurt this in most of the season. He didn't, or not most of the season, but a little bit in the season. He didn't wrestle Miles Martin at the Penn State versus Ohio State match. Now he didn't wrestle him at Big Ten. So there's something that's bothering him, whether it's his knee, uh, his his uh, arm. I don't, I don't know what's, what's hurting him, but he didn't wrestle him there. And the other reason, another reason he couldn't wrestle him is Penn State doesn't want to show Shakur and Mal to, to Miles Martin. He doesn't want him to get a hold of him before the Big Ten tournament. 
you know, this is something that I don't necessarily buy into because I think that these these guys need to wrestle each other to, you know, just because Shakur, you know, what's what's so special about Shakur that Miles Martin can't see? You know, my, there's nothing that there's nothing to lose there, really. There's nothing to lose sending Shakur out against Miles Martin and winning uh, or, or losing. It's you know showing off his skill set. What does that really matter? You know, it's a couple weeks that Miles Martin then gets to study that film, see what happens. He still has the rest of those matches where it's not like Shakur didn't wrestle the entire tournament or the entire year, and then he's coming out out of nowhere. I think it was th- there's something more to this. Whether it's that, whether it's Shakur's hurt. It was very upsetting to see that he didn't wrestle. And, you know, a lot of guys are calling out Penn State and Shakur for, for ducking him again. At this point, it's, it's understandable why they're calling that out. I hope that these two wrestle at national so we can see what happens. But really, you never know because the rest of this weight class is is pretty stacked. It's actually, I believe, one of the toughest uh, between 65, 30, 133, 125 and have you i mean every weight class is stacked but 184 is one of the best um the rest of the weight class it was pretty play by play um pretty paint by numbers as far as the placings you had one of the i guess kind of an upset at for the third and fourth place in the constellations you had uh vens who ended up losing to emory parker of illinois he lost him in the constellation final so that was really the biggest um match uh, other than at that weight and th- this was actually pretty big because he ended up he was actually he actually got pinned by him earlier in the year so um that was that was pretty big for him but at 197 pounds bo nickel another dominant penn state wrestler comes out on top he he makes it look so easy out there against colin moore guys colin moore is no chump like he's the second ranked guy in the entire country he's a three-time big 10 champion and now bo nickel wins his third uh big 10 championship by beating colin moore and not just beating colin moore like totally dominating him he beat him uh by a score of 10 to 3 and bo just he just controlled this entire match that's really what happened is you know he got he just kept getting takedown after takedown after takedown um and and that's really what it came down to now more one of my favorite parts of this match was whenever Moore was coming out, uh, coming out hard. I believe it was the second or third period. Went in for a shot on Bo. Was in deep. I mean, so deep. He was li- he was literally about to finish and get two. What happens? Bo Nickel comes out of that somehow, musters up his his strength, comes out of that, gets the takedown on Colin Moore. It, it takes him down um, on on a double leg. How does he do it? How do these guys do that? Like that—that that is such impressive skill right there. So that's his third Big Ten championship, uh, helping Penn State exceed uh, expectations there. So that was pretty big. Uh, other notes in that weight: Schultz beat Brunner in the quarters. Uh, these are two guys: um, Eric Schultz of Nebraska and Christian Brunner of Purdue. Uh, this this was big because you know this class, this weight class only sends five qualifiers to national so really this comes down to you got to wrestle your hardest tournament uh of of the entire year to get to the national level so that was pretty big otherwise this was kind of like 184 kind of a paint by numbers not too exciting other than the uh of course the championship bout and then at 285 pounds possibly the match of the night and a lot of times when you get to heavyweight it it can be a little it can be a little uneventful um, because of the style of wrestling that these guys have. I don't think this was that uneventful. You know, the third period was the most exciting. First two periods, these guys were both kind of, they were both filling each other up, trying to see how they could take the other guy down. Stevenson and Kassar, of course. Stevenson of Minnesota, uh, Kassar of Penn State. And this is the first time these two guys have met. And Stevenson is undefeated he was undefeated on the season until Kassar handed him his first loss what a match this was in the third period so these guys had a pair of escapes going into the third scores one to one essentially uh nicks each other out Stevenson ended up getting a nice nice takedown uh he ducked around Kassar I mean to see a heavyweight move like that is 
event or is incredible. He's very athletic, as is Kassar, though. So he took him down, uh, ended up getting out. The score right then is three to two because of Kassar's escape. And Kassar ends up getting a beautiful double, uh, which it didn't even look like he was going to finish that at first because of where he was on the shot. He ended up picking him up, finishing it. And with 20 seconds left, he had the score four to three. Now he had to hold Gable Stevenson down to win this match. He ended up doing it. He pulled it out, pulled out his first big 10 victory and beat undefeated Gable Stevenson. This is, it's upsetting uh, because Stevenson is one, one of the true freshmen who you could see go undefeated. Uh, you know, he could have been an undefeated four time national champ. Now you you take that away. I mean, he could still come out and win four national titles. I'm I'm not uh, debating that at all. That he could be a four timer, but now he has that one one loss on his resume, which is unfortunate. But congrats to Kassar in winning this. You know, as a Penn State fan, it always is upsetting to me whenever I end up picking against these guys. Uh, I've done it with I've done it with a couple of guys like Vincenzo last year. Uh, I picked Imar to win over him, and Chenzo ended up pulling it out again. And that's when I vowed never to bet against Chenzo because I've done it too many times. And I was, you know, unfortunately, I was proven wrong again by Kassar winning out, winning out against uh, Gable Stevenson. What do you guys think? Can Gable Stevenson beat him at nationals? Because Kassar actually has a loss to Derek White, who's number two in, in this weight class. Now, of course, uh, White is not in the Big Ten, so they didn't wrestle, but they could meet again at the national tournament in a couple of weeks. Other things at this weight, Mason Paris uh, had kind of a disheartening tournament. He lost to Jennings, and then he lost again to Jensen in the consolation rounds. He ended up taking seventh place. Uh, Paris, of course, is from Michigan. And then other things at this weight class, uh, Ham Hamida uh, actually got, uh, he had a great tournament. Um, he ended up taking third place we call him the ultimate road warrior now because he lost his first round ended up battling all the way back for third place congrats to Hamida because I mean that's rough to do very impressive tournament uh and a guy who's ranked around 10th now I believe at heavyweight well you can see him make some noise and waves at nationals and that's what a lot of these guys do they peak in the postseason and that's when they need to peak that's when they need to wrestle their best and it doesn't matter what the rankings are, the seeds are, it's how well you wrestle. So let's get into the team results. So at the team results, Penn State, of course, came out on top with 157 points. Uh, Ohio State trailed behind in second place at, with 122 points. That was uh, like a 30, what, 35 point deficit. Penn State is stacked. Six finalist which is the most in school history uh, and they have nine qualifiers unfortunately Schnott was not able to qualify for nationals at 125 pounds I was really rooting for him but he uh, was their lone guy who didn't qualify but they they end up Penn State had four winners you know I, I kept hearing these uh, announcers at the end of the match saying or at the end of the tournament saying they they had five champs five champs five champs when they were forgetting that Vincenzo didn't win. He lost. Uh, he lost to Marinelli. So I, I don't know what was going on there. But anyways, uh, at, in second place, Ohio State, 122 points. They had two winners in Martin and McKenna, and they actually ended up qualifying nine guys as well. So really uh, solid job by Ohio State. In third place, Iowa. So they had seven guys in the top four, and these next couple of teams did as well. So seven guys in the top four, uh, they ended up getting eight qualifiers, and of course they had a champ in Alex Marinelli. They came in third place. Minnesota, they kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't predict that they were going to be this good at the Big Ten tournament. Uh, congrats to them on a great, great tournament uh, with, with a lot of guys who put out upsets and just wrestled consistently. They also have seven qualifiers going to uh, the national tournament, and they also have seven guys in the top four. Uh, two other teams in fifth and sixth place, with Nebraska and Michigan respectively, both with seven qualifiers, both wrestled well. Uh, I thought I'd see Michigan up a little bit higher, you know, with Michich not wrestling uh, in the championship bout, you know, that kind of hurt him a little bit. They may have been able to pull out a, and pull into the third place, but, you know, they weren't as concerned with this tournament. And that's 
that's all the team results there. And this was a heck of a tournament. Um, you know, running back through those winners again, Rivera, Suriano, McKenna, Ashnall, Nolf, Marinelli, Hall at 174, Martin, Nickel, Kassar at heavyweight. What a tournament. Let me know again what your favorite match was because this was incredible. And make sure you tune in to all of these national wrestling championship guys that I will have coming out over the upcoming weeks. It's going to be incredible. We're talking about who's going to win the Hodge. We're talking about what to do in Pittsburgh during the national tournament and how team scoring actually works at the national level. Make sure you watch all these videos so that you're up to date when it comes to March in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Thanks for watching, guys.